We're going to go to James 5, 13 and 6. Well, 13 through 16 is where we're going to start. Okay, and the NIV version, it reads, Any of you are in trouble, you should pray. If anyone happy, let them sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick, you should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. Amen, Lord God. Just thank you for what you're going to speak. So you guys can have a seat. Hmm, thank you, Jesus. Uh, okay. Now, when I read that, God was saying to me that when you are troubled, you should pray. And he not only said when you are troubled, he has told me when I'm not troubled to pray, and he made it clear right here. And he says, when you're sick, you should call the elders of the church. So there's always someone you can call when you're going through, when the situation is too heavy for you, and you've prayed, and you don't seem like you can get over it by yourself. He has already placed someone in your life that you can go to and pray in faith and believe that God will make a way. They will stand with you. Now, if you choose to stay by yourself, over in the corner, all sick and toe up and inside. That's your choice, because God has placed a lot of people in our lives where we can go pull on them, somebody who knows how to pray, somebody who can stand in the gap for you. He said that we should come and confess our sins to one another and that we shall be healed. So if you have slipped up, if something is going on in your life, confess it. Stand, let somebody stand with you so that you can be healed. Repent. And move on. So um, I want to go to the Amplified Version and read verse number 16. It says, therefore, confess your, your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Hmm. It, now that just breaks it down. That just gives it a whole nother meaning. Now when I looked up heartfelt, it said effective, sincere, strong, and felt of passion. When I looked up persistent, it says to continue firmly in a course of of action taken in spite of difficulty or obsession, opposition. Righteous means morally right, of justifiable, honest, decent, and honorable. Now, in Ephesians 4 through 24, it talks to us about disregarding our old self, which had deceitful desires, corrupt ways, and he wants us to walk with a new attitude to put on the new self and walk like Christ in his righteousness. That's what righteousness is. He's, he's given us an example of what righteousness is, putting off that old stuff that you used to do, that stuff that used to be a desirable for you. It's not anymore. You have put on a new mindset, and your attitude is to walk like Christ. You have a thirst for the things that are good, that are pleasing to Christ, that make an example that puts Christ up high when people look at you they don't see that that that's that church kind of stuff right there I don't like see that right there no they see Christ likeness and that's something that they want to follow so um availeth I looked up availeth and it says to produce or result in a benefit of something now when we put all this together God is saying come to me but I have also given you others you can pray in faith with. You can repent and be free. Now, that all sounds good. It, it does. But in order to get 
that heartfelt, sincere prayer to come on through and avail it in a beneficial result, there are four things that Christ said we have to do. Mm. Okay. Um, now, first I wanted to say this. When I was asked to speak, I got my little notepad that I have at home, and they have different teachings that I have started, and God has spoke to me in different things, different ways, and have some teachings from my first year Bible. So I was going through it, and I was like, oh, what about this? And he said, no. I said, well, what? This one right here, I got some good notes. And he said, no. So I was like, well, I... So we went back and forth. Well, I went back and forth. He didn't go back and forth. So I went back and forth a couple of times trying to change his mind, but he said, no. What we're going to talk about is prayer. So the four things he said we must get in our prayers so that they can availeth much. The first one is we need to enter into his presence with praise and thanksgiving. Psalms 104, no, Psalms 100, sorry, verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Now, when we come before the Father, we're supposed to be praising him, lifting him up, not because of what we're wanting him to do, but because of who he is, what he's already done, because he is the I am, he is the Alpha and Omega, because he is the beginning and the end, because he is the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We are supposed to come into his presence, giving him praise and honor and glory, not looking for something, but praising him just because he is the maker. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Woo. Yes, Lord God. And so number two, we must be righteous. For us to get prayers that availeth much, we must enter into his presence with praise and thanksgiving. And the second thing is we must be righteous. We must cleanse and repent. Now, in my house, you have to take off your shoes before you come in, before you step on the carpet. And that's just how things are. And that's how it is before God. When you come into God's presence, you need to cleanse yourself. You need to ask God to forgive you for any sins so that you can be effective to what is what you're about to take place. You're about to pray. You're about to say, God, I'm coming in, and I, and I want some results. So take away the things that I've done during the day. Remove from me any heaviness, Lord God, whether I know I did it or not, Lord God. So, and just like in my house, some people don't think that their shoes are dirty. They don't want to take them off. They got new shoes on. They don't think they have to take off they shoes and walk across my carpet, but no, you still do. Your shoes got dirty just because they're new. That doesn't mean anything to me. And sometimes we may feel like we don't have the need to repent because we didn't cuss anybody out today or we're not writing bad checks here at Christmas time or anything like that. We didn't get high. We're not caught off in having sex daily, doing, just doing things out of real order is what we would call it. So we don't think we have to really repent. But what we fail to realize, sin is sin. There's no little sin. There's no big sin. God says sin is sin, period. Hmm. So you may not be off writing Bad checks. This is, I'm going to give you a few examples because some people be confused about what, what sin is and it's just, it's just a little something. No, it, it's all the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you might not be off writing bad checks, but when the cashier gave you $25 back and she only owed you 15 and you didn't say, oh, I'm sorry, you gave me the wrong amount, you kept it and put it in your pocket. No. That, that was a sin. Yeah, and called it, and that's what's in my notes. And then you called it a blessing. No, that's not how God blessed you. That, that wasn't a blessing. 
you were supposed to give it back and let her know she made a mistake because now she got to count up her money at the end of the day and now she's going to have to tell her boss what happened and they looking at her well where's that extra money she got to do some explaining but the Christ likeness in you has walked off with that extra money no that's that's not how God bless you that's not how God bless you and if you need an example of how what you would call maybe a blessing say you outside somewhere and you walk past your car and it's $25 sitting there that's a blessing it's a blessing if somebody come to you and say, God, put this on my heart to give to you. That's what a blessing is. It's a blessing if you check your account and it got more money in it than you thought was supposed to be in there. That's a blessing. A blessing is not cheating someone. Praise God. But seriously, God needs to use our vessels and they need to be clean to be usable. In Ephesians 4, 22 through 32, he tells us what righteousness and what it looks like. I want to read that. Okay, we were taught with regard of our former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitfulness and its desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbors. Just stop telling little white lies is what we call them. For we are all members of one body. If, you are, if you're anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Now that right there opens a door. When you call yourself mad, and you're not gonna, I'm not going to cuss them out. I'm not going to speak ill of them, but I don't have nothing to say to them, and they better not call my phone because I ain't going to answer, and I'm not going to say hi when I see them. You are opening the door and say, devil, come on, creep in and start something else up. So that, that, that's, that, that ain't righteousness. Okay. And on 28, anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Tax time is coming, y'all. If it ain't your child, don't claim him. Let God bless you. He'll make a way. He's a way maker. So, including myself, if it's not my child, I'm not going to claim him in Jesus' name. So, all right. Woo. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. But most work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Now, if you paying your tithes and you paying your bills and you being a good steward of your money, you can just watch your stuff change. There will be a shifting in your money. You will start having money that where you didn't have money. You'll be able to treat yourself to some things you didn't ever get to do before. And it ain't because you start making more money, it's because you start being obedient with your funds, you start paying your bills like you supposed to, you start paying your tithes, and now your bank account is fat. Now you're able to treat somebody out to eat instead of always waiting for somebody to ask you to eat. So praise God. All we got to do is be obedient and you will see a shift. So 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Stop getting caught up in gossip just because you're sitting there and you don't say you agree. If you don't stop it or say I don't agree with that, you are telling that person, yeah, I agree with it, and you're right. Uh-huh, they did it, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop talking with people if you are not uplifting and encouraging. The choice is yours. If you are not uplifting and encouraging, keep your mouth shut. The choice is yours. I'm going to say it one more time. If you are not uplifting and encouraging, keep your mouth shut 
The choice is yours. Okay. <laughs> and 30. Now, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, it's a whole lot of things that grieve the Holy Spirit. I have said this before. This is his temple. This is where he dwell at. So everything you do and put in here and, and sin and different things, if you tipping over there drinking and you're drinking excessively and you know drinking was your thing before, you ain't even got no business tasting no wine because you know what it'll do to you, you putting it in the temple where he dwell at. So now he got to move over and be all uncomfortable because you putting all this stuff in here. You grieving him. You bringing sad on him. He can't even move around and work like he want to because you got all this stuff on top of him. Hmm. Okay, so 31, get rid of all bitterness. Change, no, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ forgave you. So God has made it clear, this is what righteousness look like. So if you needed an example, there you go, Ephesians 4, 22 to 32, go back and see what righteousness is. Because you need to be right for these prayers to get up. Because you're praying all day, you're calling people, you, oh, I need help, Lord Jesus, you don't hear me. No, he hear you, but it's just going up so far and coming back down because he can't receive it because you all caught up in some other stuff. You're not living righteous like he say. The choice is yours. Okay. In 1 Peter 3, verse 12, it says, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who are upright and in right standings with God. And his ears are attentive. They're open to their prayers. So we make sure we are upright and have repentant when we come before our Father. Hmm. So again, as I move on to the third thing, number one, we must... Be come before him, giving him praise and thanksgiving. We must be righteous. And the third one is we must have faith. We cannot pray an effective, efficiently prayer for ourselves or anyone else and then turn around and be negative about the same matter. That's being double-minded. And in James 1, 6 through 8, it tells us that when we ask, we must believe and not doubt. Because a person who doubts is like a wave being tossed by the wind and shouldn't expect to receive anything from God. That's, that's, that's like those leaves that be all on my porch. And then they be out in the driveway. Then they be out in the street. They just everywhere. And that's how you are. Your mind is everywhere. You say, Lord, I believe you. You say that scripture. But then you over here, you ain't sat down. You ain't even got off your knees good. And you're talking about, ooh, I wonder if. Oh, I'm just so sad because, no, stand on his word. Give, give him some time to work. You ain't even got off your knees yet. My God. Ah, oh, Jesus. Faith is what moves God. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He says you must trust him. The whole chapter 11 of Hebrews talks about faith. So if you have any kind of problem with your faith and you're not believing or you're not seeing it come to pass or you haven't seen it in anybody else's life, you go read chapter 11 in Hebrews. It, it, it talks about God moving in a whole lot of different ways and people who stood on his word and trusted him. Hmm. So praise God, praise God, praise God. And I wanted to say that I will be the first to admit that my faith is stronger in some areas than other areas. So don't you be afraid to admit if you are having problems with your faith being at a level that it should be at. You know, that's, that's, that's how you allow the Holy Spirit to come in. You, you, you having issues with your faith, but you should be praying also at the same time, asking the Holy Spirit to guide your thoughts and to increase your trust and faith in him. You know, the enemy, he, he came. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
the enemy came to me after my son had passed. And he was like, you're always talking about prayer and believing and standing and faith. And you didn't even have enough faith to believe for your son's healing. So, but I had to shut that bald-headed monkey up and tell him, no, I did have enough faith, but I trust God. And my prayer was, God, your will be done. So it wasn't that I didn't have enough faith. Oh, because I could have stood. Believe that. But I went to my father and I prayed and I said, your will be done. So, and no, I might not have liked the outcome, but I trust my God. And because I trust him, he gave me strength. He gave me peace beyond my understanding so that me and my family can continue to walk on every single day. He kept my mother and father. They was there when it happened. But because we trusted him, we have all been covered by his blood. And can't nobody tell me that God won't give you peace beyond your understanding. Nobody. I will shut you down in a minute because, yes, he can. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. So I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Huh. Woo. And as we move on to point number four, we must know his word. We must speak his word, and we must pray his word. First John chapter 5, 14 through 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have it because we have asked it of him. Hmm, Lord God, in Jeremiah 1 verse 12 tells us that God is watching over the word to make sure it comes true. Now we hear people say that their word is bond. God's word is a bond. So if he said it, it's going to happen. But you got to trust him. You got to trust that his will is going to be done. It ain't always what we want. Just because you ask him, that don't mean it's going to happen that way. God has a plan, and you can't see the end of the tunnel. But in, when you trust him, you keep walking. You hold on to what he said, and you just keep moving because you trust him. He speaks his word. He's given us plenty of things to go and pull on, but you got to trust him. Oh, Jesus. In Isaiah, he tells us that the word does not return to us void, to him void, meaning without producing any effect, but it shall accomplish what it was meant to do, which is his will, which is his will. That, that's what got to get in your mind, his will. Will, his will, his will. Woo, Jesus. And I'll say this, that uh, when I got the phone call by my son, I was, I was, I was in there. I was, I, I was having my moment. That's what I was doing. And my auntie was in the other room praying. And I could hear her, but I couldn't hear her. But the one thing, the only thing I heard her say is, your will be done. Hmm. And that, and that stuck with me. And, I, and I'm not going to lie. I turned around and I said, God, I don't want your will to be done. But I trusted God. I trusted God. I trusted God. And so in Proverbs 15, verse 8, it lets us know that prayers of the upright please God. He wants to answer our prayers. He, he's our father. We have children. We have grandchildren. We want to give them what they want. We want to give them the desires of their heart. And he wants to give us those, but he just can't hand it off to us. We got to be in a place. He's given us directions, and we have to follow the directions. And he says we have to be right before him. So he pleases to give us what we desire, but we have to be upright. We not only have to pray his word, but we have to understand his word. So I just wanted to share some of the ways. Well, I wanted to share this first about faith. Now, um, 
you know, like I said, I'm always going around speaking faith, trusting God. So I was in my living room and I was praying, just talking to God. And I was talking to him about a rental car that the kind I wanted. They were all out because it's Christmas time. And I was like, God, I need you to make a way. Give me favor. Move my name to the top of the list. Let somebody else not want to go where they going. So I just was in there talking and just in Jesus' name. So me and my husband sat down to eat. And it wasn't even 10 minutes later. I turned around and was like, what are we going to do if we don't get the car? And he checked me so fast. He said, dang, you just asked God to give you favor, and you said, you, is your faith working? And so I just was like prune face thinking, mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> So I said, you right, you right, you right. So praise God for that. I think he don't be listening, but he be listening. Praise God for that. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, so I just wanted to go. God said we need to understand his word. It's one thing to go to his word and be able to read it. But he says we need to understand his word. So I'm going to share this. When I was uh, about 12 years ago, out of the blue, I just started having seizures. And so with those seizures, it caused my memory to sort of become distorted. And so I remember day-to-day, everyday things, but if I read something, it doesn't stick there. It stays, it stays in here, yeah. but if you ask me to repeat it right away, I, I can't. But if I go to the Word or whatever it is and start reading it, then it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So the devil used to try to make me think I can't pray because I can't remember the Scriptures. And so I just start telling him, shut up. Yes, I can. Yes, you are a liar. I start going to scriptures about God and healing, and then he healed me. I don't have seizures like that anymore. I may be taking medications, and they may be leveled out where I'm not having them, but I am healed in Jesus' name. So could you imagine now I'm getting phone calls pray for me, and they telling me what's going on, and I'm knowing, okay, they finna start, I got to start praying. So I'm running around the house, jumping over daycare kids, and I'm looking for my book, because I got to get my book so I can get my scripture, but I know, I know that I know my prayers is being heard, and God is working in that situation. I don't care that I couldn't remember that scripture, but I know how to go to the scripture, read the scripture, speak it out, and I know that it's going to happen. So the devil, shut up and ha-ha in your face because that didn't stop me from praying. So what I want to do is show you how I got an understanding of the word. We need to understand the word. It's one thing to pray it and to know it, but you got to understand what the breakdown of it is. So first I'm going to go to, and these are just little scriptures. I'm going to go to Isaiah 40. 28 through 31. Okay, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Now, when you look, when, when you look at that, I had something for them to put up. But when I say God's part, God's part is everlasting. He says, not grow weary. This is the things that God would do when you look at this scripture, when you break it down so you can know exactly what the scripture says, what's going to happen, the results that are going to happen. God is everlasting. He will not grow weary. He gives strength. He increases power to the weak. And really, all you got to do is hope. That's That's what the scripture says. But those who hope in the Lord. 
That's what he says. So God has a part. You have a part. So don't think that everything is just going to come to you all easy. No, you have a part and God has a part. So now we're going to Isaiah 41. Verse 10 through 13. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Hmm. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. Hmm. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Hmm. And Miss Jackie, when I was reading, he said you. He said you. He said you. Hmm. In the name of Jesus, he says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Hmm. So you just uphold your place just like you're standing in Jesus' name. Hmm. And so in that verse, now those uh, verses, God's part is he's going to be with us. He will strengthen. He will help. He will uphold. Now your part is do not fear. Search, you might not find, but keep searching. And then your part is do not fear. He didn't say it twice. He didn't say it twice. So if I had to pray this scripture, I would say, Lord God, I just thank you. I thank you in advance, Lord God, that you said do not fear, Lord God, that you would be with me, Lord God, that I don't have to worry or be dismayed, Lord God, that you will strengthen me, Lord God. You will uphold my hands, Father God, and keep me righteous, Lord God. Though, Lord God, I, things may come against me, Father God, I will not, Lord God, be disgraced, Lord God. You will oppose those, Lord God, and you will not let anything, Lord Lord God, perish against me, Father God, though I may search, Lord God. I may, Father God, looking for things, Lord God, but you, I will not find them, Father God. Those who rage war against me, Lord God, the enemy is a liar. Lord God, he is a defeated foe, Lord God. Nothing shall come against me, Lord God, for you are with me, God. You will take hold of my right hand. You will hold me and lead me, Lord God. I do not walk in fear because you are with me and will help me Ooh, thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hmm. okay so we're gonna go to John 14 and 27 okay John 14 and 27 peace I leave with you my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. God's part is said he's, he's leaving his peace. Then he's giving you peace. He's, and our part is to let our hearts not be troubled nor be afraid. It's a small scripture. You break it down. You get an understanding of what it is. So when you speak it, you can say, God, I have your peace. You said you left your peace with me. Your peace lives within me. I will not be troubled. I will not have fear. I will walk in your word and not be troubled in Jesus' mighty name. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. You break your word down. You get an understanding of what it is, and then you speak it out. Okay, we're going to Psalms 37. Okay, Psalms 37, 3 through 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. Now, God's part is 
He will give you the desires of your heart and bring it to pass. Our part is to trust him, to do good, delight in the, his Lord, and commit. That's it. That's it. So when you pray that prayer, you speak it into existence, but you better remember your part. You, to trust him, to do good, delight in the Lord, and commit. Commit. So, okay, last one. We're going to Isaiah 30. Verse 19, people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more how gracious he will be when you cry for help as soon as he hears, he will answer you. Now, God's part is he will be gracious. He will hear you and he will answer. All you got to do is cry out. And How easy is that? All you got to do is cry out to your father, to your savior, and he will graciously hear you and answer your prayers and give you the desires. Shift that thing around. Turn that situation around. Work it out for your good. He just say, I'm right here. Stop being so all in yourself and cry out to me. And I will give you the desires of your heart. I will answer that prayer. I will heal. I will provide. I will make a way. I will restore. All we got to do is cry out to him. So God just wanted us to learn actually how to pray. And as pastor was speaking, I was like, okay, God, now I have an understanding because we're coming up on the new year and we're going to be meeting here. We're going to be praying. And so we need for our prayers to avail as much. So now, God, I have given you what was poured into me, how to understand what you are praying. So now you can take it and impart it into yourself, and then you can impart it to somebody else. So in Jesus' name, I thank you all. Amen.